Hi everyone and welcome back to the observatory. So here we are in the power section of the dome and unfortunately I've managed to blow up or at least partially damage the smart battery protect unit. So when I came home from Cat Eye, the first thing I normally do is power up all the mini PCs and do all the software updates and everything ready for when the sky is clear. And this time when I came home, I powered up the system, uh, powered up the mini PCs and the system shut down on a low battery voltage. Now the system is fully charged, keeps the top top while I'm away etc. So there's no issues there. And I couldn't understand what was going on. So checking the system on the, the app, I could see uh, on the downstream side of the smart battery protect, there was about a two or three voltage drop compared to the upstream side straight off the battery. So the batteries were sitting around about 28 volts and I was seeing around about 25 volts on the downstream side. And when I powered up uh, the mini PCs, it sucked the system down and the inverter dripped out and the BMS dropped out on under uh, voltage. What it looks like it's happened is the BMS has failed and this is down to my fault. I hadn't followed the installation instructions correctly. So I did some digging online and sure enough, yep, I made a mistake and there's quite a lot of comments about it in the uh, various forums associated with the Victron equipment and what I've done is when I wired up the system I'd followed basically the, the basic drawing on the data sheet for uh, the inverter uh, showing or from the BMS sorry showing the DC loads going out so I just wired up my Phoenix unit the inverter directly into those uh, DC supplies however that is not the right way to do it and the reason the fault developed was because back at the start of the summer it was really hot in the observatory and I went down to the local electrical shop and I picked up one of those small portable uh, AC uh, air conditioning units and I thought, well, I'll give that a try in the dome when I'm in here and just see how much power it draws on the solar system. Could I get away with using it, etc. And when I first plugged it into the system and switched it on, you could hear that massive inrush into the, the system. And that pulled down the system on a short circuit protection and an under voltage. And ever since then, it appears that, you know, the damage has been done to the uh, smart battery protect. And uh, these things don't use... Um, uh, relays, they've got uh, MOSFETs inside them and on the various threads and things the uh, higher inrush currents can basically fuse and damage uh, the MOSFETs inside the smart BMS unit. So here we can see I've got the power coming in off the batteries and what I've actually done just now because this unit is damaged I've bypassed that and I'm taking the, the, uh, the power straight through this uh, in terminal and just bypassing the BMS unit into the distributor unit and back into the fuses and out to the various uh, components of the power system. So they've got the inverter for supplying the AC systems and I've got the two 12 volt power supply units for the various astro equipment and then I've got this battery charger unit for feeding the shutter charger battery. So what I should have done was take a direct feed to the fuse of the inverter into the inlet of the uh, BMS, uh, battery, sorry, the smart battery protect, effectively picking up a direct supply off the battery and then only using the output of the BMS, to f sorry, the smart battery protect to feed the 12 volt system or the 24 volt system, I should say, out to the fuses for the various components. This way, when you take a high inrush current uh, off of the device, for example, the air conditioning system, it's pulling that load directly from the battery while still being maintained uh, by the fuse protection and the various protections uh, within the different components. So, on that, armed with a new BMS, uh, sorry, a new, why do I keep saying smart uh, BMS? Armed with a new smart battery protect, which is the 24 volt 220 amp unit. I'm going to get the old one swapped out and reconfigure the wiring. So I've got some leftover 25 square mil cable and I'm going to pick up uh, the input off of here, route it across and into this top fuse which is the supply for the inverter and then I can move the two battery feeds off the output of the smart battery protect uh, onto the correct terminal on there reinstating the system to how it should be designed. 
Now in terms of controlling the inverter, there's two options to do it. You can either set uh, a low battery voltage in here when the system will shut down or you can use the an output wire from the smart battery protect to the control line on the inverter so that when this system powers up it powers up the inverter now i don't have a bit of cable and crimps and that to do that just now so what i'm going to do is just use the smart uh, low voltage protect uh, on the inverter uh, to automatically shut down just before the voltage setting of the smart battery protect all right Let's get to it. First thing I need to do, down underneath the observatory and turn off the battery system uh, supplies. So here we've got the cable that comes in off the charger, so from the solar panels. So I can turn off the feed coming in from them. And then this one here is the main isolator coming off the batteries and feeding up into the observatory. So that is the system now dead. Okay, now we've got the open end. I don't need this to be open anymore. I can close that back up again. And pop this back on. Even though the system's dead, I'm still paranoid about short circuits and things. Which is probably a good thing to be. So that's the supplies off the batteries, which I know are isolated, but you know what I mean. Okay, and here is the new one. So these two cables need to go onto there, get them as neat as possible. And next we need to make this cable up to go from this terminal, which is the in from the batteries, bypass the distribution block and into this fuse here. So I've already made off one end. What I want to do is go back against that wall and run behind these cables. Like so. Run along the back here. I need a 25-6. So in theory, I need to cut it here. Let's put a mark on it before I lose my place. So I better get this right, because this is the only bit of cable I've got left. I don't want to go and order more, just for this. And I need it about there. Take the end off. Okay, so that's it separated. Let me move this crimp box so I don't end up knocking them everywhere. Drop the crimp tool, and into the crimper we go. One end cramped. Next, a bit of insulation tape. Because I don't have heat shrink of this size, just to clean up the end and reduce the amount of exposed terminal. There we go, so there's the link cable. Okay, that's the fuse back to normal. Both terminals are tight. On with the cover. The battery supply. And the power cable for the unit. Now we have got the 
output enable key. We'll leave that out just now because I want to set up this first. So other than that, fuse terminals are all in. That's all terminated back up. New covers back on. Inverter supply is now coming off the in, so direct from the battery. And then the out of the smart battery protect goes to the distribution block, which feeds one, two, three. Power cables back in, inverter's turned off. Let's go and see if this goes pop. I shall go downstairs again and turn on the supplies. <laughs> All right, power is on. No smell of magic smoke. So now, what I need to do is open up the app. All right, so I've opened up the Victron Connect app for programming the devices, and I can see I've got a new battery protect uh, showing in the other devices, so they're not assigned to my system yet. So I can select that, set the pin code for the Bluetooth, which defaults to six zeros, and I change the pin code to match my other devices. So I've turned the output off. It wants to do a firmware update, so we'll do that. Okay, the firmware is updated. Now I want to change the name of the device. So I go into it again and product info, edit name. And I just want to call it battery protect. And that's that done. Now it's detect 24 volt system. And I'm going to set the under voltage protection to 21. And that is it all configured. So now if I put in the output key and turn on the output it's going to activate and it's activated as all the devices are showing power and the battery status is at 30.8 volts everything appears to be working so the next thing is to turn on the inverter and that's the inverter drawing power now direct from the batteries and not from the battery protect k okay, and looking at the system everything appears uh, you don't know if you can see any of this but battery voltages are showing all good the downstream voltages are taking in 28.8 volts and outputting 13 volts and job done so now that i've disconnected this from here i need to make sure that the inverter has got the low voltage settings uh, enabled so I'm going to have to disconnect the VE bus that goes back to the servo unit and plug in this portable one because I can't program the inverter while that's connected to the servo. It sees the AC inverter, I can connect to that. Okay so here we are in the inverter and the settings I've changed them to 21.2 volts for shutdown and 24.5 volts for reset and then if I come out of that and go into the battery protect and we can see that the battery shutdown is at 21 volts and the restart is 24 so the inverter will shut down first and then the battery protect all right excellent all right, so there we have it. Unfortunately, the GoPro has just died and overheated and shut itself down. So I don't know what it's uh, potentially lost. But anyway, that's the system all back up and up operating again. One dead battery, battery protect replaced. And uh, hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. And we'll uh, see you in the next one whenever that may be.